All right. What's going on? It is motherfucking stout season. We got a returning character, Varietal Dark Wave Stout. 6.7 for whatever reason. It wasn't uh, focusing in there. But yeah, Dark Wave right here. Very nice looking uh, can. Somewhat simplistic. But yeah, this is just... I believe this is just straight up stout. So, let's crack this open. See the color on this bad boy. Stout season, baby. The weather is a-changing. And uh, I couldn't be more happier. As soon as the weather starts getting cool and crisp. Oh, fuck. Gets my fucking nips hard thinking about that shit. <laughs> that means it's almost hunting season. I fucking love that. Mm. <sighs> big roast. Big roasty. Little bit of like dark chocolate going on. It's it's a little bit bitter. Really good shit. Really good shit. Kind of like a black coffee vibe. I like it. This is what this season is all about. As soon as it starts getting cold, man. Stout season. So, <clears throat> I figured I would use some St. James from Murphy and McNeil right there. And it has the little logo on the side there. And then the base, the uh, Slante base, and then St. James. It says 5.5 ounces. And then the Slante base is actually the one that has... Um, stout beer in the ingredients list so that's pretty cool stout beer duck fat mutton tallow beef tallow goat's milk colcum butter all the butters vegetable glycerin shea butter lanolin kaolin clay all of that shit tussa silk bunch of good shit in here and this one is just gourmand to the fucking max like again i don't think this shit smells like beer Kind of like A&E's Black Birch Stout. This is actually pretty similar. I've heard people say like butterscotch or kind of like um, cookies. I think it has that like chocolatey, hazelnutty um, quality to it. It's fucking sweet. It's warm. It's a little bit like cooking spice type deal. It's very, very lovely. Like literally when I say smelling like a snack, that's what I mean. This stuff right here. Literally, someone's going to want to take a bite off. I'm going to be using our wolf whiskers here. This one is uh, the black and silver. And uh, <clears throat> has the black wolf synthetic on it. Very nice. Let's go ahead and wet the tips. And get to lathering. So I haven't used Murphy and McNeil in a long time. But I am a big fan of Murphy and McNeil. I think they have great products. Uh, pretty much every soap base that I've tried of theirs works good. And um, <clears throat> they have good customer service. Pretty much the whole nine yards. Their website's pretty easy to navigate. And uh, order fulfillment's good. So really, they just they do it right. I like Murphy and McNeil a lot. Haven't bought anything in a little while. But... Um, that's all right. I, I still fully appreciate and support Murphy and McNeil, and maybe in the near future I will make a purchase, but I've just been exploring, you know. That's what I like about this hobby is all the shit that you can explore. I just kind of realized that I started my video while someone was, like, industrially vacuuming something. Maybe they're cleaning their car or something with, like, a shop vac. That shit sounds like it's fucking banging. Hopefully you guys can't hear it. <laughs> but if you can, sorry about that. I didn't even fucking, I didn't even pay no mind when I was setting up the video. <clears throat> Anyhow, so this, this is going to be one of those soaps that has a tinge to it. You can see how dark it was in the bottom of the bowl. This one is going to have kind of like a light brown lather. Um... It might be one that you take caution and use a synthetic rather than a badger 
or a bore um, if you're, you know, if you don't want to run the risk of staining your natural hairbrushes. Maybe use a synthetic. I don't care so much about that. I haven't really had bad luck, you know, in that, um, in that realm, but you can never be too careful. So it looks like we got a nice lather there. As you can see, it's kind of like an off-white. Light brown, like I said. I only have about like 18 hours of growth. I shaved after work yesterday with the commissary, and it wasn't like necessarily a BBS shave. I didn't get as much irritation as I thought I was going to get. It's actually, it's actually all right. Um, possibly an ingrown hair right here, or maybe it's just, you know, a blemish because all the beard oils I use, who knows, but, um, I figured 18 hours was enough. I can visibly see growth on my end. And so I figured since I didn't get BBS last night and I can visibly see it, there's enough to shave or shave. <clears throat> So last night, I had um, two of my buddies over. We uh, were drinking some Oktoberfest beers and enjoying a few cigars. <clears throat> it's uh, That was uh, really nice. We had a good time. Um, this morning, I was a little bit slow out of bed, but had a cup of coffee and that quickly subsided. I think I have a, I think I have a shit ton of leather here, and it looks good. It looks dense. It looks creamy, and I just know it's gonna be slick and protective. So no troubles here. I have used this before in the past, and um, I'm a huge fan of the scent on this bad boy. I'm telling you. I have the matching splash. I could not imagine a soap that you didn't need an aftershave splash for um, more than this one. And I'm not talking about post-shave feel, although the post-shave is quite nice. I'm talking about like scent strength. You really can't expect your soaps to hang around long on you. Um, it's not what, like, they're not meant to be colognes. They're just meant to kind of give you a little bit of scent during your shave. But this, <laughs> this soap is fucking kicking and screaming. <laughs> I mean, it is banging. The, the scent strength is way out there. And, um, once you, once you rinse off, wipe off, it's still going to be around. Like, this shit is going to stick to your skin until you fucking wash it off. And don't, don't even... Same with the clothes. If it gets this collar line, will not stop smelling like this. Even if it's, like, a week from now. You put it up to your nose, you will smell it. And just the soap. Don't even get me started with the aftershave. <clears throat> Alright, so... The infamous return right there of the fucking... Rockwell, God fucking damn it. <laughs> Hopefully it's focusing on your end, but yeah. The infamous return of the Rockwell 6 Shady, because Lord Shady, a subscriber of mine and a cool dude on Instagram, Shady sent this to me because he heard me bitch and complain one too many times about... <laughs> giving my Rockwell to my friend and never giving it back. So he sent me this all black um, stainless Rockwell 6S and um, I still had some of my um, my stainless, you know, kinda matte stainless um, base plates left over and so I figured I would do the shady and put the uh, two different color um, like a different color base plate head and handle and we're using the R5 
And so yeah, I got the black and silver uh, Raiders Rockwell right here, or the Rockwell 6 Shady, as it is now going to be known. Thank you, um, Joey, for doing this for me. I really, really appreciate it. You're a fucking badass. And we're going to be using a fresh pull silver blade in this bad boy because back in the day when I had my Rockwell, that was my go-to setup, was the Rockwell 6S on plate 4 with the pull silver blade. And that... I really credit that setup to making me, technique-wise, a better shaver. Like, when I got the Rockwell, I had such success with it. It was so smooth, um, forgiving. I felt like I was able to learn and grow with it. And, um, not that I was changing plates all too much, because I started doing, I started with, like, the two plate, and then I went to the four plate, then I went to the six plate, and I was like, okay, six plate, maybe a bit much, and then I went back down to the four, experimented with blades, and once I found what I liked I stuck with it for a while and I just got good like I just got good at shaving and when my technique started finding a rhythm and once it started clicking that was it like I went from getting weepers and irritation every shave to getting no weepers no cuts no irritation on a regular basis. I mean, everybody's going to mess up from time to time, but it, it became a much higher, like, success rate that I was getting good shaves that I was proud about and happy about. And um, the Rockwell success really did that for me. Like, for me, $100 at that time was like, I just bought the most luxury razor I could even fathom at the time and um, like I knew there was more expensive shit out there obviously but at the time at my stage in wet shaving which was pretty early on I couldn't imagine having a more expensive razor considering the shaves I was getting I was enjoying the fragrance and the ritual but I wasn't getting good shaves necessarily the Rockwell literally like I think it like put the it cemented my feet in this hobby, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and it really, it really made me stick around because I started getting great shaves that I was super happy with. Got a big ass fucking lather shot that I just got hit with there. Um, but yeah, I started getting shaves that I was happy with and I wanted to, uh, you know, shave on a more consistent basis and I could because I wasn't being left with ingrowns and irritation all the time. And so, yeah, it really just cemented my love for the hobby. And so I really credit Rockwell with making a quality razor at an affordable price and really I don't knock them for their like growing big and marketing big because they're they're drawing people into the hobby and a percentage of those people are gonna become like big time wet shaving hobbyists there's just no two ways about it and so I really credit Rockwell for that Rockwell and supply um, injector. I credit both of them. For doing that. And um, 
I have no problems with them being the gateway to uh, wet shaving. This thing's just like, it's like riding a bike, like you never forget. <laughs> never forget how to do it. it. It's fucking, it's kicking ass, it's phenomenal. The Carve is like my favorite DE razor. And I really think that the Rockwell and the Carve shave similarly. And I think the only reason that the uh, the Carve is my favorite, if I had to like stack them up against each other, is just aesthetics. Like that's all it comes down to when I'm comparing these two razors. I think they shave really similarly, but aesthetically, you know, the carve just has a little bit nicer um, fit and finish and stylistically, you know, it has a better design on the handle, but really they're both very high quality shavers. Looks like I took the head off of that, whatever it was. <laughs> That's all right. We knew that was a risk. <clears throat> but yeah, fucking happy to have this back in my den. I never asked for my old Rockwell back because I didn't want I gave it to my friend because he was interested in wet shaving, and I wanted to, um, you know, send him in the right direction, gave him some soaps and splashes, my Rockwell, and a synthetic brush, and I told him, you know, use all this gear until, <clears throat> until you decide whether or not you want to, um, you know, whether you like wet shaving enough that you want to buy your own gear. And um, a few months went by, and I would check in with him, see if he was still, you know, enjoying the stuff, and he was. And then one day he came over, and he had, you know, my bag of gear and soaps and everything. And he gave me everything back, and he thanked me, and we had a few beers, and just kind of talked about how wet shaving was going for him, and he was liking it and whatnot. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> he goes... He, uh, he left and I opened up that bag of gear so I could put everything back on the shelves. And uh, sure enough, motherfucking putting all my soaps away, put my shaving brush back up on the shelf. And uh, I'm like, where's my Rockwell? What the fuck? You know? Everything, he gave everything back. Literally everything except for my Rockwell. I was like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> And, uh, I rarely see him anymore, but, um, I never asked for it back because in the Rockwell's absence, you know, I got the carve and I was really picking up steam with my love for the hobby and I was just acquiring all kinds of shit, soaps, razors, brushes, I was picking up steam. And uh, I didn't need the Rockwell. I wanted it back, but I didn't need it. And um, if he was enjoying his time in the hobby and the Rockwell was helping him, you know, remain interested in shaving this way, I, I, I you know, I, I wasn't going to take that away from him. And so I just forgot about it. And, um, motherfucking Shady fucking came to my rescue. He saw me, you know, a hole that needed to be filled. And being the big man he is, he came and filled that hole. And now I'm, I'm whole again.
<laughs> All right, no homo. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just, I couldn't be more happier that shave went exactly as I remembered it. I, I'm still very much in love with the Rockwell success. If you have friends or coworkers or whatever that are interested in wet shaving and you want to point them in a direction for like a starting point, point them towards Rockwell. You know, if they have a cell, you can get, I believe the 6S is $100. You could get the 6C, which is the same exact razor functionally, but just in a different type of metal. Um, point them to that. I think that's only like 50 bucks. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's cheaper. So that's that's a great place to start. The Rockwell's fucking awesome. We got the matching aftershave splash right here. This stuff is milky. It's kind of murky, um, probably because of the uh, fragrance oils. But um, I promise you, this shit is going to hang around. And I'm going to be smelling like a fucking snack everywhere I go. Like, literally. Hide your kids, hide your wives, and hide your husbands. Because... They're gonna be wanna. They're, they're gonna be wanting to fucking take a bite. I guarantee it. Okay. Like I said, this shit is not gonna come off until I fucking wash it off with soap and hot water and um, possibly some barbicide. <laughs> this stuff is not gonna come off. It's banging. It's loud. And just the way I like it. And absolutely no fragrance <laughs> um, reaction on my end. This stuff feels great. And um, yeah, so Murphy and McNeil, the St. James, and the Beer Base Slant, Sliante? Slant? Slant? I don't know. But yeah, the Beer Base has a ton of good ingredients in it. A phenomenal fucking soap. He should really make another soap in that base honestly the base is fucking kick ass and beer actually has like some good qualities to it i've talked to multiple soap makers that have used beer in their soap base um for one-offs beer has good qualities so <clears throat> good shit post shave and the soap real good shit i am thrilled to have the rockwell back in my den i just had to break out my limited pole silver um, stash to have a shave for old time's sake. Thank you, Brother Shady, for fucking hooking me up with that. I am in debt. <laughs> um, the Wolf Whiskers did its job, whipped up a very nice looking lather, and then, of course, the Staples, the Lancaster in every shave. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a fucking fantastic Saturday, and don't forget. Stout season Saturdays. No, that's not going to be a thing, but stout season, fellas. It's getting warmer. Break out those stouts and dark beers. <sighs> All right. Thanks for the support. Have a good weekend, guys.